All right, welcome back. In the previous two videos, we talked about glutamine and glutamate biosynthesis, and we talked about how glutamine synthesis is from glutamate by the action of the enzyme glutamine synthetase. And then we went over the covalent regulation of glutamine synthetase and saw that it's very complicated. Now, I think that the allosteric regulation of glutamine synthetase is actually a little bit easier to understand. And let's go over it now without wasting any time. All right, so we know hopefully that glutamine synthetase's reaction is to convert glutamate to glutamine. All right, and we know that that reaction is going to consume two molecules. It's going to consume ATP and ammonia. Now, so all we're going to talk about now is just the allosteric regulation of glutamine synthetase. All right, now this displays the net reaction here, but the main thing I want to show you is that glutamine synthetase, at least allosterically, is for the most part just turned on. It's sort of what we would say constitutively on allosterically. The way it's regulated mainly is by turning the enzyme off, is by allosteric inhibition. And we notice that glutamate is converted to glutamine, as we've, as we've said in multiple videos. Glutamine can be used, depending on the organism, to make six main molecules. Adenosine monophosphate, tryptophan, carbamyl phosphate, glucosamine 6-phosphate, histidine, and CTP, cytidine triphosphate. All right? It turns out those six molecules can allosterically inhibit glutamine synthetase, denoted by these X's right here. Okay, Why is that important? Well, if we have, say, tons of uh, CTP, that's an indication that we already have tons of glutamine. So CTP concentration proportional to that of glutamine. So if we have tons of CTP, we don't need to make any more glutamine, so it makes sense that CTP would turn this enzyme off, considering the fact that it's also using up ATP. All right. In addition, glycine and alanine, two other amino acids, can also inhibit glutamine synthetase. The point is, though, is that when we have lots of these eight molecules around, they're going to turn glutamine synthetase off because indirectly for glycine and alanine, but directly for these six, they're indicators that we already have plenty of glutamine around, so we don't need to make any more. Okay, we don't need to make any more. The other reason that that's important to turn glutamine synthetase off is notice what glutamine synthetase is consuming. It's consuming ammonia, so if we had tons of this enzyme uh, active all the time, we'd be lowering the ammonia to dangerous levels. Now I mentioned that ammonia is toxic, and it is. Okay, We've mentioned in previous videos that in fact mutations in some enzymes that consume ammonia can lead to mental retardation at a very young age. It's very toxic. It can even kill you in high concentrations. But at the same time, just like anything, very low levels are also dangerous. We'd like to maintain a very very narrow range of concentration for ammonia. And so if we have con constantly active glutamine synthetase, we're lowering ammonia concentration. And ammonia is used to make other things, so we have to maintain a concentration. So if glutamine synthetase is too active, then turning the enzyme off will allow ammonia to build back up to at least safe levels to where we can use that ammonia for other things. Okay, So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. But in general, just remember, glutamine synthetase is for the most part constitutively allosterically on. And the way it's allosterically, allosterically regulated is by turning it off with allosteric inhibitors. And these are the main ones shown right here. All right, so hopefully that helped, gave you some understanding. Uh, if you have to, go back and watch the video on covalent regulation of this enzyme. Alright, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.